Um, so next we have, to get a little bit more into invoices, we have uh, Ms. Courtney Barnaby. She is the AP Accounts Payable Supervisor, and she is going to be presenting on Show Me the Money, um, Ways to Create Error-Free Invoices. Hi, everybody. Good morning. I'm usually one of those people that doesn't need a microphone, so if I get too loud, I apologize. I will try and be cognizant of that. Um, I get the fortunate opportunity to discuss the one piece of accounting that I think everybody likes to talk about. If you are not an accountant, we are going to talk about how to get paid. Um, before you invoice, and there are things that uh, you've discussed all morning, um, but just to give you a quick reminder, have you been approved by the purchasing department as a city vendor and submitted a W-9? Do you understand prevailing wage? I'm sure you're all experts now, um, if applicable. A lot of times, uh, this is the number one reason invoices get stuck in the process because your payroll has not been certified. And um, once it's certified, the prevailing wage is extremely quick about uh, submitting your invoices for payment. And have you understood who your agency contact is for follow-up questions? Even though we do have a centralized AP department, uh, your main point of contact will be the agency you're doing business with, uh, whether that's um, the public works department or another city department, um, that would be the agency that you would most likely be in contact with. And just as a reminder, um, there is a website, denvergov.org slash purchasing that will give you uh, the contact information and people that you need to speak with uh, in order to get set up as a vendor. Content of an invoice. This is what's important to have on your invoices, whether you run QuickBooks or another accounting software. Please make sure your contact information has the legal name of your company. That it also has your doing business as name. And that your remit addresses on the invoice. Many people uh, receive uh, checks either through their bank or through a centralized accounting uh, address. And so if you do not receive checks at your actual business address, please make sure the remit address where you want your checks and payments to go to is on your invoice. As far as what's extremely important to have on your invoice, we need a unique invoice number. That just means that we can't have 10 different invoices all as invoice number 001. Um, please make sure as you're submitting those that everything is different. Probably the single most uh, important information you can have on your invoice is, your, is the city's PO number. When, when the services were ordered or the goods uh, were ordered, the uh, agency should be giving you a PO number. The PO numbers now with the new system that we're in start with PO-000 and then a five digit number. That will go on as time um, prevails and we start um, getting more and more POs, but right now we have the three, digit, three zero digits. And um, if you have done business with the city before, you might Remember that uh, the agency five letter code used to be part of that. It no longer is. So just make sure you at least have those five digits uh, for the PO number. The invoice date. Uh, the description of goods and services and the itemized cost. And as Candace mentioned, that's really important if, it's, if you're a prevailing wage vendor. Um, they they oftentimes can't push that through unless they have the detail they need. And of course, the total amount due. The payment terms are subject to purchasing and contract agreement. So whether uh, you normally get paid on a net 10 basis, um, but your contract with the city might be net 30. We will have you set up in the system according to what your contract reads. 
So regardless of what you put on your invoice, um, it, will, it will maintain what uh, this, the city contract says. So um, just make sure that your contract net terms match up with what's on your invoice. Some other helpful information that's good to have on invoices are your tax ID number and the contract number with the city if that's applicable to you. And the project information. Sometimes there's a project number or just the name of the project can be helpful with us. Finding the right person if the invoice comes to us, finding the right person that needs to approve the invoice. And as I mentioned, the single most important item on an invoice is the city purchase order number. This gives us all of the detail that we need in order to contact the right agency and the right person at the agency. You can understand that there's almost 13,000 employees uh, with the city of Denver, and uh, we wanna make sure it gets into the right hands so it's not floating all over the place. Uh, this is the, the information you need on the invoice to make sure that doesn't happen. And once you have the invoice all ready to go, where do you send it? All invoices should be sent to your contact at the city agency doing the purchasing or placing the order. If you don't know who that person is when you started out or who uh, placed the order, you can go to the Denver uh, Gov website. Up on the top bar, you see A to Z. Uh, that takes you to the A to Z city directory, and then you'll click on the agency and department contact information, and then you'll see it's listed alphabetically by agency. Once you click on the agency you're looking for, that will give you the contact info, either email or a phone number. As far as contacting us, this is uh, the best way to get a hold of us if you have questions. Um, if the contact you, don't, you cannot find the contact that at the agency you're working for, um, please give us a call. I have an amazing team who, is, who have customer service as number one on their list, and they are happy to help you as you call. Uh, we will get you to the right person if we are not it. Also, if you are doing business at the airport, they have their own AP department, and that is their email address. They run everything um, through their AP department, then it comes to us for final approval, and uh, they are the best ones to reach out to if you have questions specifically dealing with the uh, airport. And that's it. That's all I have for our accounts payable. Please feel free to give us a call. If you have any questions, we're happy to help. <laughs> I'm going to go to the next one.